Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters in Islam, Jazakumullah khair for inviting me again to Perth. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, I'd like to thank you all for your patience, mashaAllah. Again, like every year, very, very, very patient from 9 to 6. I call it the Perth Marathon. MashaAllah, great ability, attentiveness, you're listening, you're benefiting. May Allah reward you and, and يعني, may you benefit, inshallah, to the maximum from this event and the like, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, this is like, like always, MashaAllah, you've been hearing from 9 to approximately now about Judgment Day. Uh, a sa'a, detailed information about the signs of the hour. And we have reached a point now where I'm sure we're realizing with the flow, we're coming towards the real end. You know, things are getting very, very, very hard. Things are getting very tight. It's a time that no one wants to see, which is my first point today in my lecture. Like Sheikh Shadi mentioned briefly, my brothers and my sisters, some uh, Muslims in our time, because of the tests that we're living, the current environment, the hardships, we tend to look for hope. We tend to look for a solution. And because we are weak and we find ourselves unable to change, whether individually or as a community, we find ourselves unable to move forward. We tend to look for a hope. Something external will happen, something you know, that we don't have to do ourselves. Rather, it's something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam promised. We're waiting for it and we can't wait for this change to come and happen. So we want to bring things back to scope a little bit. Let, 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 let us be very, very clear that every Muslim should not wish, you should not wish to ever live until you see these days, my brothers and my sisters. They are called the fitan. These are the major tests that will come at the end of time. It's not a happy season. You wanting to see the Mahdi, you wanting to live until the Mahdi appears is a sign that you do not understand how heavy and severe these tests are. Rather, every Muslim should ask Allah al afiyah should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect him from even seeing these tests or seeing these days. The Muslim does not ask Allah to be tested. Rather, we ask Allah for afiyah and protection. We don't want to be tested because like Sheikh Shadi also mentioned, most probably with the current state, our current iman levels that we have, belief levels that we have, the current connection with Allah that we have, if we see any of these tests, we will definitely fail. This is why my brothers and my sisters, we are warning people about the hour. We are warning them about these great events that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us from and His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us from. It's still important to educate ourselves, but we have to leave today. We have to leave today with a benefit. We have to leave today with a plan. We have to leave today changed people. There's a couple of more of major signs left. I will address them briefly and then I will also share with you some thoughts about the whole topic that we need to think about, ponder over, and inshallah they should change us positively in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After mashallah, Isa alayhi salam kills the Antichrist at Dajjal, and after uh, you know Ya'juj and Ma'juj, like Sheikh said, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers khalas, has clearly purified earth and there's a very very few there's a very very few maybe sinners still alive maybe my brothers the majority are believers but the human nature is as such whenever prosperity comes Deen starts decreasing again and unfortunately this is the case and we realize it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَأَى بِجَانِبِهِ Whenever we bless insan, whenever we give insan too much, when everything is too comfortable, you find yourself, ten, you know, you, we start tending to neglect Allah as if we don't need Allah anymore. When everything is smooth, family is smooth, work is smooth, health is all right, mashallah, the human being starts believing he is God himself or acting as if, you know, I don't need anyone, I'm independent. He becomes arrogant. He doesn't want advice. 
وإذا مسه الشر كان يأوسا when evil hits him a bit when hardship tests him a bit he starts losing hope straight away this is the quality of insan but subhanallah my brothers and my sisters our habit is as such when things are smooth we neglect Allah so likewise after prosperity and khair spread on earth in Isa alayhi salam's time like we heard people again will start neglecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and neglecting deen and then other major signs will appear one of these major signs my brothers and my sisters is the dukhan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran فَارْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُّبِينٍ يَغْشَ النَّاسَ هَذَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send severe smoke, very, very strong smoke that will cover all earth. For a believer, for someone who is close to Allah, someone still on the path, this smoke or this heavy smoke will only result in a, 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 a small flu, a zukam, you know. The believer will only feel the smoke or the results of the smoke as a flu and anyone who does not have Iman, does not have belief, does not have a relationship with Allah, this smoke will be punishment for them. It will take the sight and it will take away the hearing. Again, another sign that will differentiate between believers and non-believers and very limited information in the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah is available about this sign. But it's something we have to believe in, accept and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that we never ever see these days. Also one of these other signs, my brothers, is uh, the landslides. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned his ummah that towards the end of time, three major landslides will happen. A major landslide in the east, a major landslide in the west, and a major landslide in the Arabian Peninsula. Again, my brothers, major signs of Judgment Day, sort of the cleaning process, the last remnants of humans that are still in doubt, still, in, still you know, hesitant. All these signs are there for them, let tamhis, for us finishing after this, there will be no more chances. You know, it's a sign to wake up or else. Because shortly after, my brothers and my sisters, the most major of signs will appear, which is the sun rising from the west. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us and told us that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the most merciful. He Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala accepts the repentance of anyone, my brothers and my sisters, regardless of your sin, regardless of how much you disobeyed Allah, regardless of how much haram, how much disobedience of Allah is in your life. All you need to do to repent to Allah is ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and intend never to return again. Regret the sin and intend never to return and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instantly accepts you, not only accepts you, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala converts all your bad deeds into good deeds. Allah is the most merciful. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna Allah ta'ala yabsutu yadahu billayl ليتوب مسيء النهار ويبسط يده بالنهار ليتوب مسيء الليل الله سبحانه وتعالى extends his arms his arm at night for the person who committed sin in the morning to repent another opportunity for this for the sinner of the morning to repent and Allah extends his arm in the morning for the sinner of the night for the someone who committed sin by night to repent حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها until the sun rises from the west when the sun rises from the west my brothers and my sisters that's it no iman can be gained after this this is the point where no more repentance can benefit you if you repent then it is as if you have not repented it does not benefit your deen does not benefit your relationship with allah this is it this is the time, this is the hour starting, my brothers and my sisters. This is why the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept encouraging us to repent, to return to Allah, to establish our deen, to establish this relationship with the King Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala before these major signs appear, especially the sun rising from the west, my brothers. 
people they tend to philosophize sometimes and ask Allah how will the sun rise from the west it's very very easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who made the earth you know rotate around itself in a certain direction to stop rotating in that direction and rotate the other side straight away the sun will rise or any other means or any other ways the creator subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have to explain himself but we have as believers to believe that this will happen and this will come and we have to prepare ourselves before that also shortly after the sun will rise from the west and by forenoon by duha time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will release the beast we call it adab in arabic language وَإِذَا وَقَعَ الْقَوْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَخْرَجْنَا لَهُمْ دَابَّةً مِنَ الْأَرْضِ تُكَلِّمُهُمْ أَنَّ النَّاسَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا لَا يُوقِنُونَ When the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes, the beast is released. This beast will appear, some narrations say it will appear in different places, but then mainly it will appear in Mecca from the Haram. And the job of this beast is to go around all earth, and to mark people the beast will talk to people and mark them anyone with iman you know in some narrations the beast will have the staff of musa alayhi salam and will have the ring of sulaiman alayhi salam any believer allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order this beast to mark his face a mark of iman that will make his face luminous it will make his face bright and apparent and anyone who failed to fulfill the orders of Allah, failed to bring true Iman and belief in his heart, the beast will come with the ring of Sulaiman, debate him, and it will mark his face, a mark of darkness. So believers and those who don't have belief, my brothers, will be completely distinct and completely separate. Again, all in preparation for Judgment Day. People spend a lot of time arguing how will the beast look, you know, looking at weak narrations. The truth is, the details are not important. It's something that will be supernatural, something beyond our comprehension and understanding, something that is the creation of Allah that will have this job and task to segregate people and separate them. And then shortly after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a huge fire from Adan in Yemen. You know, this fire will start slowly, slowly pushing people towards Asham. You know, Asham now where all the conflict is happening. This is where all humanity will be gathered just before Judgment Day starts. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send this fire. It will start in Yemen and will go around all earth collecting people. People who have Iman, people who still have a relationship with Allah will start moving you know will start riding whatever transportation they have of course the hadith refers to camels they will ride happily and safety because they are they are they can't wait to meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they want to meet allah they want to be they want to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are content with meeting allah another group my brothers will be not as good will be as more hesitant so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this fire force them so they will start moving to Asham. They will start moving to Syria and these areas, my brothers, on camels or in transportation. One to a camel, two to a camel, up to 10 on one camel. Basically, they will jump in transportation just to arrive there. And others, my brothers, the fire will push them pushing because they are trying to avoid the meeting point for judgment day. And the fire will spend the day with them, the night with them. When they sleep, the fire is around them. This is the hadith of Rasulullah until it will gather them all in a sham. And this is when judgment day will start. Very, very, very huge events. Very, very serious events. And I'm sure all day, mashallah, you have been hearing, you've been informed, mashallah, about the details of the signs, the major signs of judgment day. But we want to leave today with a very, very important question. How does this topic, my brothers and my sisters, affect our current life? This is the key of any Islamic lecture you attend or hear. You have to ask yourself, how does this lecture, how does this talk, what did I benefit today and what change will happen in my life? 
We want to change my brothers and sisters. We want to move forward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't stay stagnant like we are. We can't stay in the state that we're in. We have to move to Allah. We have to return and repent to Allah. Some people, they spend a lot of time, you know, interested in the signs of the hour. And it's a mashallah. It's all from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's authentic, mashallah. There's a lot of information, a lot of beneficial information. But don't lose direction. Don't lose perspective here. A man came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the same interest. Qala ya Rasulullah, mata sa'a? When is the hour? He was interested. He wanted information from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But look at where Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directed him. Qala wa ma a'adatta laha? What have you prepared for this hour? Which is the key point we have to leave with today. Sheikh Shadi touched briefly on it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him. And I will emphasize again and again on the same aspect, my brothers and my sisters. What have we prepared for this hour? What have we prepared for these signs? What have we prepared for our days that are finishing quickly in this dunya, my brothers and my sisters? You know, people who are waiting for the Mahdi, people are waiting for major signs, people are studying major signs. A lot of people spend hours and hours and hours. They are trying so much to stretch the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and try to explain current happenings according to the hadith, which is really very, very vague. The hadith is very general and they become very specific. Don't fall, don't fall in this trap. Don't follow this path. Rather think, how am I preparing myself for that day? Don't wait for the Mahdi. Don't wait for these signs. You would rather die before these tests. Rather ask yourself, I might die tonight. If you die today, my brother or my sister, if your night, if today is your last day or tonight is your last night, judgment day has started for you. Don't worry about Mahdi or the Dajjal or the return of Isa alayhi salam. Your judgment day has started. What have you prepared? The disease that is eating the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our time is what we call Tool al-Amal. Long hopes. If I ask anyone present here today, brother, sister, can you die tonight? Can tonight be your last night? Could that Dhuhr Salah you just prayed earlier be the last prayer you will ever pray? Could that Asr Salat coming now be the last Asr you will ever pray in your life? Every Muslim in the world will say, Allahu Akbar, Shaykh, of course. Some people get offended even. Say, what are you saying? I'm a kafir, yani. What are you saying? I don't believe. What are you, why are you talking to me like this for? Of course I believe I can die. Say, brother, relax, please. Don't get offended. It's just a figure of speech. We want to understand each other and want to understand the example. Who my brothers and my sisters really in his heart has true and genuine doubt that today might be my last day. Who came here to the, to the convention in the morning planning himself, preparing himself that maybe there's a chance that this is my last day. Who prayed his Dhuhr Salat now with a thought in his mind that maybe this Dhuhr Salat will be my last salat, I'd better perfect it. I'd better make sure I have 100% concentration. Why do we have plans for next week and next month and next year? Why is it that the Muslim has no, not, not even in the back of his mind? The truth in the heart is that we think we are here to stay. As long as I'm healthy and no doctor said to me, you're dying, Alhamdulillah, I'm fine, I'm living. This is the reality in the hearts. And this is what is killing our deen. This is what's killing our Iman. No one says, I want to die without Salah. No one says, I want to die without Iman. No one says, I want to die without Quran. Everyone says, Inshallah. But unfortunately, our Inshallah is not, is not used properly. You know, Inshallah means nowadays, forget about it. Yeah, and inshallah, maybe, maybe a miracle will happen. Maybe the Mahdi will come to my house, grab me, take me with him. You know, 
this is the this is the this is the the frame of mind we're in now you know I'm waiting for something external and big to happen why because I don't want to move myself I think I'm here to stay it's destroying our Deen ask a, a student in school how is your Deen what are you doing for Iman how is your Quran how is your Salah in the Masjid how is your Qiyam al layl are you waking up for Dua at night are you are you are you remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly how is your manners how is your akhlaq? How are you dealing with your parents? Are you dealing with them properly? He says, Oh, Allah al Azim Shaykh, Wallahi, I'm just too busy now. You know, I'm in school, and you know, school is hard. And my parents are on my back every day and do this and do that. I have no freedom. No way I'll achieve anything in this period. But I promise you, Shaykh, inshaAllah, once I graduate from school, Allahu Akbar, Shaytan pats you on the back, you know. He pats you on the back of your neck, say, Habibi. He talks to you like your best friend. He talks to you like a sheikh. He says, brother, you are stuck now. You're in a situation now. I promise you, once you graduate from school, freedom. <laughs> don't worry. I'll take you to the mosque myself. I will wake you up for the hajjud. I don't need for alarms. Where am I? Where, where am I going? I'm your qareen. I'm your best friend, you know? And he keeps patting you on the back and massaging you softly until you submit and say, Allah, now no way. Inshallah, after school, 100% deen. Masjid, Iman, Quran. Haram school finishes. He graduates. The Shaykh comes to him and says, MashaAllah, brother, MashaAllah, sister, what happened? Where are your promises? He goes, Shaykh, Allah, I'm stuck in uni now. And you know in uni, Shaykh, Wallah, Wallah, I miss school days, you know. Everyone in uni says what? Where are school days? Wallah, they were the best days. We were free. We had the time to do whatever we wanted. Shaitan has dragged you from school to university. And in university, again, we delay. Wallah, we're stuck. It's very hard. The fitna, the fitna in uni, Shaykh, you have no idea. We are struggling. It's very hard. No way I can worship Allah in that state. But inshallah, Shaykh, I promise you. And Shaitan just promised me too. Inshallah, once I finish uni, 100%. Where am I going to go, Shaykh? Where am I going to go? 100% masjid, Quran, qiyam, akhlaq, Allah. Whatever you want, I'll be there with you. I'm free. No assignments, no doctors, no exams, nothing. Freedom. He finishes university a haram and then he wants to get married. And he says, Sheikh, we are living, you know, in a very, very dangerous place. You know, there's so much dangers around us, the environment, we're gonna sleep, we're gonna fall in haram. Please, Sheikh, let me get married. Wallahi, Sheikh, you know, we all are young men, young women, must I say, Wallahi, all I want is a partner to assist me in my deen. Inshallah, once I get married 100%, I'm just missing this sakina in my life. Once she comes in my life, I'm Romeo, she's Juliet, and it, it, we're on, mashallah. Everything will be sweet, deen will be beautiful, salah in the masjid. She wake me up for the hajjud, I'll wake her up for the hajjud. Little does you know, a haram, once he gets married, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. No salah, no deen, no lie, nothing. Nothing. People get married and they start saying, oh, where are the days of freedom? Those who are married are wishing they were not married. And those who are not married are wishing they were married. You know, subhanAllah. Imam al-Shafi'i and other you know, narrations of other scholars, they are quoted to have said, Man tazawwaja faqad rakib al-bahr. It's hard to explain in Arabic. But in the old days, jumping in a ship in the sea, on a ship in the sea, was equivalent to committing suicide, you know? Someone gets really depressed, he goes, all right, I'm going to sail somewhere with a boat, you know? So they considered marriage a similar risk. If you get married, you are taking a suicidal mission. If he has children, the ship sinks. Why, my brothers and my sisters, now you think you are busy. But soon when you have a family, you have children, now you have to pay bills, you have to pay rent, you have to do this, you have to look after her, take her out, take her to holidays. She wants this, she wants that, you want this, you, he wants that, and it's gone. This is why, my brothers, if you look at our lives, there is no point in life where a Muslim will have free time for deen. We have to make time for deen. 
the Muslim plans ahead says now is the time no delay don't believe the promises of shaitan don't believe the false ropes of shaitan and iblis don't worry in the future in the future this is the disease that is destroying our deen everyone thinks inshallah in the future things will get better this is why the sahaba radiallahu anhum my brothers they took the advice of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look at his words sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam badiru bil a'mal sab'a race to a'mal rush to good deeds compete in good deeds compete in deen before you are hit with one of the seven afflictions what are you waiting for هل تنتظرون إلا فقرا منسيا what are you waiting for a poverty such poverty that will make you completely forget about deen nowadays alhamdulillah things are available money is available financially we are doing very good compared to the rest of humanity my brothers mashallah everything is available for imagine you are hit with such poverty there's no food on the table for your family for your children how can you focus in deen how can you focus in salat how can you read quran how can you study knowledge you can't think هل تنتظرون إلا فقرا منسيا or the opposite او غنى مطغيا now mashallah you're a bludger you know you're doing nothing maybe allah will, will give you so much you'll become one of those very very businessmen who don't even have time to scratch their face you know he can't oh brother come to the masjid so masjid brother time is money for me every minute dollars are coming in too busy to worship allah too busy to learn deen too busy to learn quran او غنى مطغيا او such money and richness that will make you transgress against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cross the boundaries. هل تنتظرون إلا فقرا منسيا أو غنى مطغيا أو مرضا مفسدا or a disease that will make you incapable or will destroy your ibadah and worship. You know when someone is sick, even if you have a little flu, you can't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. You have a blocked nose, you can't read Quran properly. You want to make sujood, you feel uncomfortable. You have a bit of a fever, you can't worship Allah. What are you waiting for? Now you are healthy. Maybe tomorrow you'll be sick. Use your time, race to good deeds. This was the spirit of Sahaba. This was the advice of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aw maradan mufsida, aw haraman mufannida, or old age. Maybe Allah will make you live until you are old. And then you can't worship Allah properly. You want to go to the masjid, your back is hurting you. You want to make sujood, Allah the doctor said, don't, your knees and this and that. Or it will, in, it will make you incapable of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, incapable of worshiping So, هَلْ تَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا فَقْرًا مُنْسِيَةً أَوْ غِنًا مُطْغِيَةً أَوْ مَرَضًا مُفْسِدًا أَوْ هَرَمًا مُفَنِّدًا أَوْ مَوْتًا مُجْهِزًا Or sudden death. Nowadays, my brothers and my sisters, young men, young women are dying more than older people elder people are living but young people are dying more often now diseases subhanallah that we always heard only come to elder people are now coming at young teenagers we are hearing the stories now there is no no guarantee you will live no one should ever have the hope i will live five years i will live ten years how do you know a little car accident and you're gone a small disease unexpected around us be allah shows us signs around us but still my brother shaitan is fooling us are you waiting for the dajjal the prophet of allah said this dajjal are you waiting for dajjal he is the worst expected are you waiting for the hour the hour is even more bitter and worse what are we waiting for why are we delaying our deen for why are we still having hopes and planning long-term plans the muslim lives day by day my brothers and my sisters the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam grabbed a young man a youth he grabbed a young man very very famous his name was abdullah ibn umar radiallahu anhu the son of umar ibn khattab he grabbed this young man by the shoulders you know when you in, in, in it's an arabic gesture if you want to say something very important you grab the person in front of you in front of you by the shoulders he grabbed me by the shoulders live in this dunya as if you are a stranger a traveler or a transit passenger did you ever ponder about the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my brothers? 
We are transit passengers. We are not here in this dunya to stay. Wallahi, you are not living here forever. Love whatever you want. Love whomever you want. Get attached to whatever you want. Soon, you will have to leave. You will have to depart. You will have to separate. Jibreel alayhi salam came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa qala ya Muhammad oh Muhammad ish ma shayta fa inna ka mayyid live as long as you want one day you will die wa ahbib man shayt and love and get attached to whoever you want fa inna ka mufarik you'll be separated from each other wa amal ma shayta fa inna ka majziyun bihi and do as you wish for verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to account on judgment day so Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu when he heard the words of the Prophet live in this world as a stranger as a traveler as a transit passenger ibn umar radiallahu anhu was smart he was a young man there was no reason for him to expect any sort or form of death coming soon for him but he was smart ibn umar يقول, after he heard this from rasulullah he used to say أصبحت, when you wake up in the morning don't expect the evening to come وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ If you hit the evening, don't expect the morning to come. Can you imagine my brothers and my sisters, if we manage to convince our hearts that today might be my day. Imagine my brothers and my sisters, if the angel of death was to come to any of us this morning, after Fajr, he knocks on your door, says, mate, I'm coming, at, you know, Maghrib. I'm coming. Prepare yourself. How will your day be? How will your day be? Are you going to spend your day on YouTube? Are you going to spend your day on Facebook? It's halal, Sheikh. It's not about halal and haram now. It's all about my brothers and my sisters. Are you fulfilling what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you or not? Are you doing the job Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you to do or not? You know? So if you know your death is coming, wallahi, wallahi. No work, no wife, no children. You will run to the masjid and start crying and pleading to Allah. Reading Quran, Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, accept me. No time to waste. You know? How about if the angel of death comes at you at the beginning of the night and says to you after Maghrib, I'm really, really sorry to inform you, but before Fajr, you're gone. How will your night be? Will you snore till Fajr? Will you sleep all night? Will you sleep and miss Fajr that day? Will you have your alaman for tahajjud? Will you have your alaman for a night prayer? Wallahi, you will not be able to sleep at all. You'll cry, you'll plead, you'll be praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A true believer, my brothers and my sisters, lives as such. He is not waiting for judgment day to start. He wants to glee everything before this day is even close. He knows that his judgment day might start tonight, might start any second. And because of this feeling, they are working very, very hard day and night. They are competing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them. Allah said, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Race. It's a race, my brothers and my sisters. A race for the forgiveness of Allah. وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ And a paradise the width of which is heavens and earths. Subhanallah, my brothers, those who have Iman, they don't delay the deen. Those who have Yaqeen and firm belief, they know, my brothers and my sisters, that time might run very, very shortly. There's no time. They don't waste any moment. When they start intention for change, when they want to repent and return to Allah, they don't delay this repentance. Some people, you know, when they want to worship Allah, they say, inshallah, Ramadan. You know, a very, very common thing. Inshallah, I promise you, Shaykh, next Ramadan, 100% repentance of everything. Next Hajj, Inshallah, I'm just waiting to go to Hajj. And Brother, how do you know you are living till next Ramadan? How do you know you're living till Hajj? How do you know you're living till you get married? A true believer acts straight away. Does not delay, does not, does not, you know, push forward. Rather, he starts ASAP. This is why we say, my brothers, please, we beg of you. MashaAllah, we come to such a beautiful environment. We hear about the sa'ah. We hear about the hereafter. We hear about the greatness of Allah, the might of Allah, the strength of Allah, the qudra of Allah. We hear about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hear about the severe days that are coming. And we want everyone to leave today's gathering 
with a genuine intention of repentance. Wallahi, my brothers, Allah is Arham al Rahimin. Allah is the most merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He loves us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He wants us to return to Him. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Lallahu afrahu bitawbati abdihi min ahadikum. Sakata ala ba'irihi wa qad adallahu bi ardin fala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so pleased with the repentance of His slave. More than, more than if one of you was traveling and had his camel with him, all the provisions, all his water was on this camel. And then he lost that camel somehow. And then he went to, he, when he lost the camel, he realized death is shortly coming. No water, nothing. So he takes, he, 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 he goes to a shade of a tree, reclines there for a bit, sleeps for a bit, wakes up and finds the camel right above his head. He grabs the rope. How happy is this man? How happy is this man? His livelihood came back to him. A hope of life again came to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happier. Allah is more pleased when his slave returns to him than this man is, my brothers and my sisters. So please, enough delaying. Enough delaying deen. Enough delaying akhirah. Wallahi, my brothers, the more you delay, the harder it gets. Don't let shaitan fool you with foolish hopes and foolish promises, you know. Shaitan is lying to you. He is promising you what you do not have. Please, my brothers, repent to Allah, return to Allah and start preparing. Start preparing, brace for these fitan that are surely coming. And we are seeing the signs of in our time. Brace and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us, protect our iman, protect our brothers and our sisters everywhere and protect humanity. We want everyone to see the light. We want everyone to taste the sweetness of Iman before it is too late. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who practice what they hear. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك جزاكم الله خير وبارك الله فيكم Thank you very much for hearing me out. جزاكم الله خير.